Hi, I'm Adam Levy. I'm here to show you the new DVS100P software from Data Video. The DVS100P software from Data Video allows you to create your own private streaming platform, delivering live and on demand content worldwide with ease. The software is designed to be extremely easy to use and can be installed in the cloud on a local PC. The software supports live streaming and video on demand channels. First, I'm going to show you how to create a new live streaming channel. First, we need to select a channel name. Here, I'm going to select Sports. Push URLs are used to push the incoming RTMP stream onto one or more destinations. Destinations can be other DVS100 servers or CDNs such as Ustream. Next up we have options for recording. We can choose to always record the stream or to start and stop recording manually. When the option to always record is selected, the software will record as soon as you start streaming. When manual recording is enabled, you can start and stop recording from the control panel. Next we have the ability to add a suffix to the recorded file name. By default, the file is named after the channel name. This option allows you to add additional text into the recorded file's name without modifying the channel name. Checking the option to give each recording a unique timestamp will ensure that each time you start and stop recording, a new file with a unique name is created. Leaving this option unchecked will result in the original recording being overwritten when a new recording is started unless you check the option to append the recorded file. In this case, subsequent recordings will be joined to the end of the original recording. Next, we have three options to restrict the size of the recorded file. By default, no limit is set. The final two options are used to limit access to this channel. I will cover these in detail later in the video. I'm now going to save the new live channel. You will see that I'm directed back to the main control interface. This message across the top indicates that the service must be restarted before some of the changes can take effect. The service will not be restarted until I choose to do so. This is because restarting the service while live streaming could interrupt the stream. You should only restart the service when none of your channels are live. I'm now going to click the link to restart the service. Once the service is restarted, this message will disappear. Our new live channel is now ready to use. I have set up a data video NVS25 encoder to stream to this channel. The power button is used to enable and disable the channel. When a channel is disabled, it will not accept an incoming stream. The RTMP URL is used to configure your encoder and can also be used to send the stream to a data video NVD decoder with low delay. The HLS URL can also be decoded by data video decoders, however delay will be greater. Here we have a button to play and embed our channel. Hitting play opens up a new page with a video player embedded. By default, this URL is not protected, so it can be sent to anyone who needs to view the stream. The player is compatible with all desktop and mobile devices. A powerful feature of the DVS100P is the ability for viewers to pause and resume live streams. Clicking the embed button generates code to embed the same player into your own website. You can customize the dimensions of the embedded player. Now I'd like to show you how to create a new VOD or video on demand channel. You will see a VOD channel is automatically created for each live channel. This is where your published recordings will appear. Here we're going to manually create a VOD channel 
and upload our own content. First we need to choose a channel name. Here I'll use music and then save the channel. You'll see the new channel has been created but it has no content yet. The next step is to upload our content. Click browse and select the video file to upload. Now save the channel again. You will see the video file is being uploaded. Once complete you'll be redirected back to the VOD channel list. You will notice our video file still isn't available. This is because we must first publish all content before it is visible. To do this, select the channel again. Here you will see we have three options. Publish will publish the file and make it visible. Delete will delete the original file from the server. Unpublish will unpublish or hide an already published file but will not delete the original file. You can see I have no files available to unpublish as I've not yet published any. I'm going to select the publish option and select the checkbox next to my file. Now when I save the channel, you can see the file has been published. The software automatically generates a thumbnail. And you can see we have the same play and embed buttons as we do for live channels. The video player will use the thumbnail as a poster image. Now I'm going to show you how to record live streams. I'm currently live streaming to the channel named Sports using a data video NVS25 encoder. This channel now has manual recording enabled, meaning I must start and stop the recording using these buttons. Clicking the red button will start the recording. The software displays a message to confirm the start recording command was received. Clicking the white button will stop recording. Now if we select our channel, you can see the recorded file. The process of publishing recordings is the same as the VOD content. Simply select the file and save the channel. You will now see the recording under the VOD tab. The statistics tab has eight dials providing real time statistics. Incoming byte shows the amount of data that has been sent into the server. Outgoing byte shows the amount of data that has been pulled out of the server. In bandwidth shows the incoming bandwidth usage for the whole server. Here you can see there is just over 1 megabit per second coming into the server from my single stream. Out bandwidth shows the outgoing bandwidth usage for the whole server. Currently we have no viewers so the usage is very low. Server uptime tells us how long the machine running the DVS100 software has been powered up for. Finally, we have dials that show a CPU, RAM and disk usage. Channel statistics provides us with details of all our incoming streams. You can see the video and audio codecs, video resolution, and number of audio channels. Clicking the boot button will expand this view and show the incoming bandwidth for that specific channel. Now I'd like to talk about some of the important options under the settings tab. The max VOD upload size determines the maximum size of file that can be uploaded to the server. The HLS playlist length determines how much video is stored on the server. This is important as it also determines how long a viewer can pause a live stream. By default, the web player will use HTML5 technology. This is supported by all modern web browsers. If HTML5 is not supported by the browser, we will fall back and use Flash Player. 
Here you can manually disable HTML5 support globally or only for desktop browsers. The maximum buffer length dictates how much video the web player can buffer in seconds or minutes. The maximum buffer size dictates how much video the web player can buffer in terms of size. The minimum DVR length tells the web player the amount of video that must be available on the server before the pause button is displayed. This must be set to a value less than the HLS playlist length in order to enable the pause button on live streams. Now I'd like to show you how to create user accounts. First give the user a name. Next we must assign them a login role. If the user only needs to view streams we should assign them the viewer role. Viewer accounts are limited and can only play back content. Administrators have access to all channels regardless of who they're assigned to. Administrators can modify all user accounts and change global server settings. Power users have the same rights as administrators, however they cannot modify other user accounts or change global server settings. Next we have the option to set an expiry date for this account. If we leave this option blank, the account will never expire. Finally, we must select a password. We can now log in with our new viewer account. Please note that by default all channels are visible to all users. Now I'm logged in as a user with viewer only privileges, I can only play content and change my own password. Now I'd like to show you how to restrict access to channels. By default, channels are visible to all users and player pages can be accessed without a user account. For example, anyone with this URL could view the stream. Likewise, if the player was embedded in an external website, it would load without first requesting the user to log in. To restrict access to a channel, simply select that channel name Check the authentication required option and save your settings. Now if I try and access the player page URL, you'll see that I'm first asked to log in. After logging in, the player will load. The same applies if the video is embedded into your own website. Here on my desktop I have a very simple HTML file with my music VOD channel embedded. If I open that file, the embedded player box first displays the login box. If I log in, the player is then loaded. For further information, please visit holden.co.uk.